No, that can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. There are more endings, more possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Flight. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. <laughs> to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. Chapter 5 Signs They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across a snowy terrain. forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. <laughs> Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. Luca winced shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. covered in snow. Two faint seams were visible along the surface. with a translucent 
exquisite layer of ice. Looking down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. The crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. <laughs>
She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Oh, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. Luca turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Well, let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. No, now. We both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt. We can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town, and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitudes! What about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, buckaroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. strode out into the evening sun. A 
figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. It stood above them, lingering in contemplation. Slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. <laughs> Whether it was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger, Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. <laughs> Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. together an insult. <laughs> Iggy huffed with gratification. <laughs> Nat began to turn away indifferently. was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. Chapter 
Chapter 6 The Source Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. There was no reply, just snow-covered silence. <laughs> Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. <laughs> Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. <laughs> Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. smack on the back of his head. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Iggy flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull. <laughs> Luca rolled his eyes with realization. Iggy stifled a chuckle.
Iggy triumphantly raised the shoebox. Look in his eye, 
Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Luca felt Iggy loose in his grasp. Every muscle in Luca's body burned. Luca felt his hand slipping. With a 
chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. To be continued in... Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. Revenge served cold. Second time's a charm? Wait, that's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good? I was even starting to like Iggy. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find something more definitive.